nobody ever looks at a documentation like that. I mean, it's more or less useless. <laughs> There are various tools for documenting a database and I think it's a question of what kind of documentation do you actually want? What's the purpose for it? Because some documentation will help you in your developing effort and some kind of documentation is more a static image of the database as it is, you know, so that you could reconstruct it if that would be necessary or if you're handing over the project to somebody else, you might need some special documentation as well. And I must confess that some of these examples are quite uh, database centristic. I have a favorite tool here, if I can show you. It's a program called DDF Structure Viewer. And what it does is you point to a DataFix workspace, and then you basically just scan the application, and then you go to the diagram here. Now you see there's nothing, but if I choose a complete diagram, I get a complete diagram for the order entry example, which was what I chose. As you can see, this is a very crude example. I mean, that's not a lot of information, but the central information are there. And it, what's really interesting is this one here. These are the related files in the system. What we have here, here are more or less um, system files. I can just take them away. Neat. And we can take those away. Neat. So these ones are interesting. The way of documenting a database like that is actually called a Bachman diagram. The arrows point from one table to another, as you can see and it points from the child most table to the parent table. So in this case, you have the order detail in the bottom, and that's because in the order detail, you have a order header ID and an inventory ID that points to those tables. Yeah, so when you look from the bottom of the diagram and up, you will see child, parent, and then this again, child, parent, or this one, child, parent, yeah. child, parent relation. So the direction of the diagram sort of shows you the hierarchy of the tables, yes. the way they are relating. Essentially, a relation like this also would mean that this is a many-to-one relation. So when you look at it, you can immediately see that the order detail table here actually constitutes a many-to-many -many relation between order header and inventory. You have all the relation information you need from this table here. There are not any details. Sometimes the, the details can make it hard to actually see what's going on. Then there's something altogether different, like this diagram here. I can zoom into it. It's called a database file, and it has everything. This works with SQL files. And the problem with SQL files is that, as such, the relations are not stored in metadata. There are no, there are no construction that will save what relations you have in the table. They are all implicit in the views that you, you might make. That's where you make the relations, so to speak, while you're working with the data. The only thing you can do is that you can set up relations in the Microsoft database which is not setting up relation, but is setting up the rules for what to check to ensure the database integrity. But it also works as metadata to a diagram like this one here. But you can also see there's no obvious hierarchy. I mean, this table here relates up to this one here, but also down to this one here. This was made for the, uh, for the um, documentation that was uh, to be delivered with the uh, commissioning of that particular project here. Yeah. So the customer got this diagram here and they can sit and look at it and, and, and uh, they can say, isn't it a nice looking diagram or whatever they might think looking at things like that. But personally, I think it's a very little use because if I want to see particularly how one table relates to another one, I would probably go into the database to whether it be Databricks or you know, Microsoft and I would look there. When I'm going into an application and I need to work on something specific, I will usually figure out, okay, this revolves around the post table and the topic table and wrap the comment table. I usually draw these three tables on a paper and then I can kind of get an overview of what I need to do in the application to, to make it work. You know, pen and paper is also yeah. a very, very good tool. Yeah. <laughs> As you can see, if you put the code, you know, at the left side of the screen here, it's something that you actually code. Um, 
setting up. That. Uh, yeah, because if you like this way it's documented, then you could actually do like Stu did, yeah. extracting the metadata and then write the, the, uh, the code automatically. Uh, as you said, if you have MSSQL or, or PHP MyAdmin, where you actually can see that table is documented, what is the value of having yet another external database documentation tool? Well, in my experience, specifically with the big one, you know, it has all the details and so on, where yeah. the customers like diagrams like that, and they can put it in a shelf. Yeah. You know, so now we have the database documented, so everything or you know, anything goes wrong, we still have the documentation here. Yeah. But nobody ever looks at a documentation like that. I mean, it's more or less useless, in my view. But you it looks you nice. put it on the wall and it, it looks nice, yeah. and then you know it, that, that this is your application. But uh, you're still going to go down and, and look at the tables and uh, use pen and paper when you need to actually write some code for a few tables. Well, you certainly shouldn't underestimate the value of putting this one on the wall so that everybody can see how clever you are. Other <laughs> 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 than that, I'm not sure actually. I prefer no. the simple diagrams yeah. anytime. And you know, if I get a new system, if somebody asks me to work on a new system and another system, yeah. I mean, which has already been developed, I generate an overview of the database before I look at the code. I mean, the code is probably something at the last thing that I begin to look at. I'm trying to find out what does this system here actually do. I mean, looking at the database is a very, very useful thing to do. This was a remake of one of our most popular videos from last year. And um, I've cut out a lot of uh, small pieces of it, about three and a half minutes, actually. Uh, so if you're into those kind of things, you can go back and watch the old video as well and see the difference. But looking back, I realized that perhaps me and Klaus has been talking too much with each other and not engaging you that much. And the idea with making those videos is that we want to get closer to you and we want to engage with our uh, viewers and audience. And, and we also want to hear your ideas and comments, perhaps in this video, what kind of database documentation do you use? Do you document your database? Perhaps that is the case, or we have just chosen topics that are not engaging enough. And either case, we would love to hear from you and you can write in the comments or emails or what have you. Um, just some reflection. We'd love to hear uh, any feedback from you if, if there's something we can do to improve our videos and uh, be more engaging. So looking forward to hearing from you and see you next week. Bye-bye.